Laura, I'm very excited that you are all here with us. We are going to show you how to work smarter and epic and not harder. Uh, this is a fantastic session that myself and Anissa and Catherine are going to go through with you and we're going to get some great information out of it. So thank you very much for hopping on with us today. Yes. We, want to, we want to keep everything interactive. So if you guys have any questions, please chat those in, raise your hand. So we can go through every idea or every thought that you have. You know, we all learn from one another. So um, this is a great way to ask your questions, see what other people are doing throughout our session. You know, you guys are all using our as Noah private Facebook group and asking your questions and everybody's chiming in. So please utilize this as well so we can help you with um, any questions that you may have. So today we are going to provide you with some useful tips and tricks of working in Epic. And then we're also going to talk about those activities that pop up at you every time you do an event in Epic. So you add an account, then you get that ad activity that you added this account, it's set to open. We want to work with you guys and maybe have some set to automatically close, maybe have them hidden in the background. So we don't see them at all. So we are going to go through it, look at a few of them. And then if you have any that you want to look at as well, just let us know. All right, we are going to go out into Epic and start having some fun. Let me pull it up. All right, can you guys see my home screen? Yes, yep, can. I can see it. All right, fantastic. All right, Anissa, take it away. Perfect. Well, thank you. And hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so first off, I'm going to show you how to maximize some features on the Epic home screen. I feel that sometimes these are overlooked. Um, so I thought this would be a good place to start and, you know, maybe refresh your memory on how some of these things do work. So the first point I want to go over is the activities. So activities here, they are intended to help you track the action items that you are taking when servicing your clients and your home screen, the open activity section, that gives you an overview of those open activities that have a follow-up start date as of today. Um, they'll also show up here if they're overdue, okay? So if you aren't using them anymore, if you did, you did your follow-up right here, you, you know, no more action is required, please go ahead and right-click and close on that activity, okay? You can also right-click add an additional note. Okay, remember these are date and time stamped, add your note, click finish. You can also change your follow up start date to a later date. So we can remove this from our screen here and set it for next month. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. And we can also change the owner of this activity. So let's say I'm going on vacation this week and I want Laura to follow up with this client. So I'll literally just right click again, change the owner, employee, and then you would have to locate them through here. Click the name column and type in Laura. Oh, well, this is Laura's account. So we would locate Anissa. Okay, so that would then be assigned to me. Okay, and before I change any, um, change anything on this activity, I do want to point out this section here that is the last note entered. So whatever activity I'm highlighted on here, I'll see the last note made on that activity. So pretty cool. If you don't see this, there's a possibility we have the task options checked. So just click that little drop down and do last note entered. Okay, so there's a lot of that you can do with these activities just by right clicking on that activity. So let's change that date. I do wanna show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna change our follow-up start time here. 
Let's make that October 1st. finish so it's going to be removed and then on 10 1 I'm going to see that follow-up activity here okay, just a reminder on how that works on your home screen so along with our open activities there's a few other adjustments you can make here too we can change what we see on this activity so right now we see the description we can see the account name you know what, but I want to rearrange my columns here. So I want the account name to be listed first. What is it that I'm working on? What is my follow-up date? There's that client's phone number. Easy access all right here. So there's more or less that you can add to this actually. So if I go to select columns, you know what, maybe I want to see when this activity was last updated. And maybe I don't want to see who this was entered by. So select columns, check those filters that you want to see, click OK. And then again, rearrange those columns to your preference. So that's something that you guys can certainly customize. So right now, are there any questions on that? I'm going to pull up the chat here. So I have a question, how do I set the default to show all activities in the future and urgent at the top? So it will only show the activities with the follow-up date effective today or later, but you can run an activity report that shows you all your open activities. So that is one option. Good question. Okay, if any other questions come through on that? we will get back to that. So an, one more feature on the activities I wanted to point out is the customized view. All right, so from here, I can actually, so we're using Laura's screen, Laura can view the activities that I'm working on. So one reason why you might wanna use this again is if you know, I'm, I'm Nisa's going on vacation and Laura wants to help cover the activities that I was responsible for, for that week. So all you would have to do is go to customize view. We would have to give you access to that employee's account. Okay, so once you do receive access, you'll be able to select their name, click finish. You will see then all of their activities on your home screen. So again, this does require um, administrative support. So email us at training at asnoah.com. Let us know the username that you like to view of those activities and we'll immediately give you that access. So quite a lot you can do with that. Are there any other questions before we move on to opportunities? I'm just gonna let the chat. I don't see any more in the chat. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's scroll down to the opportunities. So here's um, a quick view of what you can see with your open opportunities. Uh, we can see, you know, opportunities with a target close date within the next 30 days, 60, all the way to 150. So what are what do your prospects look like? What are you working on? Just a quick view here again. I'm just trying to adjust the section here. Again, you can select columns, rearrange what you see. Maybe we don't care about the product type. We do want to see the sales team. We want to see the stage, number of policies involved in that opportunity. That's customizable. Um, and I wouldn't be doing my part if I didn't say join my tracking sales webinar. If you are interested in learning how to track uh, your opportunities and prospects, do that. Go to the ASNOA University page on the ASNOA website and register for a tracking sales session. Anissa, Sarah's saying she cannot see her opportunities on her home screen. Okay, yeah, so I'll make note of that. There might be something on the back end that's not activated, or there's a possibility sometimes where, if you see my little cursor, if I minimize something too small, it might vanish completely. So there's that, see what I mean? It could 
it could just disappear from the page. So I'll make no and we will look into that, Sarah. And now you're only going to see opportunities in that area. Only going to see those if you are adding the opportunities when you are entering in a prospect. Yes, and if you're again, if you're not, but you want to learn how to use those opportunities, please join my webinar on tracking sales. Yes, you can make that section bigger. So all you have to do is move your cursor, wait for that little double arrow to display, and then you can expand. All right, so beneath that, we have a report quick view. So this is probably one of my favorite features of the Epic Home Screen. And if you worked with me before, we work on reports often. And where you usually go for that is the My Reports section. So, you know, you start off in Reports and Marketing and My Reports. And if you just want to run a report, you have to go to Print Preview. Nothing wrong with that route, but there is a quicker route, which is right here. So let's say you're using, um, I don't know, the activity report constantly. You're making sure that everything's been updated, your clients have been serviced on time, but you're always going in your My Report. We can add a link to your report quick view so you can just log into Epic, run that report direct, directly from here. So let me show you how to do that. We'll go to the reports and marketing. Oops, hold on. Sorry. Thank you, Laura. All right, and here's your My Reports. Remember, you have access to customize the reports listed in your My Reports only. So let's say it is this report here. Activity report, minus seven days. I want this added on my home screen. All you need to do is right click, or maybe not actions, maybe my computer froze for a second. There we go. Right click, deliver as report quick view. Okay, we can change the name if you like. I'm gonna leave it as is. I want it on my home screen, my report quick view. But you know what, let's say Laura wanted to give this to me as well. She can do that. So do others, she's just gonna locate my name, check the box and click finish. But in this example, we're gonna do the home screen here. All right, let's go back to home and there it is. It is that simple. Locate that report, deliver it as report quick view. And it will display as a PDF right from here. Amazing. One of my favorite features with that. I know. Um, I think we have some questions here. So Vernon said that he's just putting the account in Epic that he closes. Is that wrong? Vernon, it is not wrong. That is entirely up to you. But if you are only tracking the accounts that you are winning, what are you doing for the accounts that you're losing? What are you doing with your prospects? Are you marketing to them later? You know, when you put all of your prospects into Epic, then you can run a report on those prospects and then you can market to them at a later time. That's right. exactly right, Laura. And again, if the, and if Bernie, you wanted to learn more on how to do that, how to better track your prospects, and then in the future later run reports on why you didn't close on the sale there, that's going to help you track that information. So again, tracking sales webinar. It's every Monday at 3 p.m. Central Time. Join whoever is interested. You can join as often as you'd like or as little. I never lose. That's right. Yeah. So I'll teach you guys how to do that. If you're interested. Thanks, Anissa. Yes, Jose. Actually, Catherine's going to show you guys how to do that in a bit. So that's awesome. I'm almost done here. There's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. Okay. So back on our home screen, we have our options bar, but there's also a smaller version of that right here. There is a help option. So if you guys click that, and we'll do apply to Epic Help. Yeah. It's going to pull up a built-in library 
of epic tutorials while they're step by step and might even have a video tutorial right here. And the nice thing about this too is no matter where you're at in epic so right here I clicked the home screen or I was on the home screen right so when I clicked help it gave me tutorials on the home screen. Automatically if you were in the clients account and you were working in act the activity section you clicked help it's going to give you a bunch of activities tutorials it's really cool again just trying to cut you down on some time and having to do that search, but you can. You can search your contents here. Really cool. So what I'm actually going to do here is hotkeys. There's a lot of hotkeys in Epic, you guys. Here's my index. I'm going to select this one. All right. And it's going to give me a nice list here of all the different hotkeys and the shortcuts that we can do in Epic. And I also like to um, promote this, especially over the weekend. Sometimes, you know, you guys end up working over the weekend and we're not in the office and you're like, oh, how do I add an activity? How do I add a policy? You can go right in here and take a look at those steps. In addition to our video library on YouTube, but this is built in an epic. So you don't have to jump from place to place sometimes. Come right in here, search what you're looking for. And it'll give you the direction that you need, how to add an activity, how to close an activity. It's all right here in the Epic Help. Well, is there any questions on that? I don't see any questions on the hotkeys. Did you want to show them one how it works? Yes, let's get into that. So I'm going to close out of our window here. Get out of the help. And let's go to a client account. All right, so I believe the hotkey F9 is one that would allow you to create an activity. There we go, F9. It automatically is getting that activity started for me. Okay, and then you just follow your procedure to add that activity. So there's obviously many of shortcuts you guys can take. I recommend printing out that shortcut spreadsheet, you know, save it as a digital file, or maybe print it, set it on the side, put it in your drawer, um, just so you can refer to that and learn those routes. I'm not gonna save this activity here. Okay. That's awesome, well, that I love those hot I know. Oh yeah, help is F1. Yep, the slide epic help is F1. So hopefully that is new information to some or a refresher to the others. If you guys have any additional questions with what I reviewed today, you know, please chat that in. I'll get back to you at a later time or email training at asnoah.com. But with that said, I'm gonna pass this on to Catherine. Hello, I believe this is my first live with Laura um, yeah. event. Yay. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Welcome, thank you, Laura. Catherine, Catherine um, before you. you before you start, can I go through the questions here that are yeah, in the absolutely. Chat? Okay. So we have a couple questions. Um, can you add birthdays to activities or with Works. Natalia, we can. We have a whole birthday report through links um, that will show you when Catherine gets to that area. But you can add them on an activity as birthdays so it would show up on your home screen. But we have a better way to run birthday reports that we can show you as well. And is there any direct link between Epic and EasyLink? Um, Jose, yes. You put in a policy shell into Epic and put in an auto policy shell. You can take that information and upload it to EasyLink. You cannot do the home at this time, just the auto. And I'm gonna tell you, I have tested it and tested it and tested it. And also um, in our home office with Allegiance, with Maggie, we have tested it so many times. It is actually 
faster to enter the data into EasyLink and also enter in your accounts to your prospects into Epic. If there was a better and faster way, we would have it and we would share it with everybody. But as of right now, it's still faster to enter them in uh, into each software program. But if you do want some information on that, just let me know and we can email that out. Um, is there any sales letters that we can download and personalize in Epic? If you have a letter that you want to send out to your clients, we can add that into Epic for you and you can run a marketing campaign that will send an email out to all of your clients. Or Epic has a new feature that is template email. So if you have the same email that you respond back to every single one of your clients, we can set that up as a template and using Outlook through Epic, you can send out those emails as well. We can give you some more information on that. Russ, I don't know why the control C copy doesn't always work. That we'll have to look into. And Vanessa, with your policies in suspense, um, I have a session every week on Wednesdays at noon central time for Epic Servicing Health. So as Anissa said, you would just go to our Noah University web, uh, web page at noah.com and register for that session. We have sessions almost every day of the week, different weekly sessions. So take a look at them. Joel loves the spell check. Hot tea, that's awesome. All right, anything else? Any other questions anybody have? Yep, F7 spell check. Yes, Boneyard, Joel call, calls the um, items in suspense the Boneyard. So mm -hmm. we have that session, just join it tomorrow at noon. You can join it every single week. All right, thanks everybody on all those questions, it's great. All right, Catherine, take it away. All right, yes, that's awesome. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna show you mostly, I think mostly shortcuts more so than um, kind of those activities that Anissa was showing. But um, first one is our locate dropdown up here. So obviously locate is how you, you know, add and locate new um, accounts. But if you click the dropdown, it'll show you the last 20 accounts that you were in. So this is super helpful. You know, if you talk to Laura and Ty yesterday, they call back today, you can super easily come back and find them and get right back to their account. All right, now let's locate a client. We're gonna pull up our good, good example. Let me pull, there we go. Okay, so let's say that Ty calls you, um, he calls your office and you you know pull up his account so you can kind of be prepared to take his call. On this screen, on the bottom, you can see some of these quick links. Uh, I'm gonna highlight just a couple of these. First is the account servicing contacts right here. If you pull that up, it'll show you whose client this is. So especially for you larger agencies, It'll show you who their CSR is, who their producer is, and that'll help you, you know, direct the call properly to whoever is in charge of this client. Um, other than that, we also, uh, I'm also going to show you the open activities. This one will show you all of the open activities for Ty's account. This is really helpful too. Again, if Ty is calling you, first of all, you might have an idea as to why he's calling you. So let's say there was an activity in here to get um, his driver's license information. He calls, you see that activity in here and you probably have a good idea as to why he's calling. Or if he is calling for some other reason, then you know to try and get that information while you have him there on the phone. Um, from there, let's say you get Ty's information that you needed and now you're ready to quote him. Um, like Anissa mentioned, there is a link in here under links to go directly to your Easy Links login. Um, so you can just, again, quick access to go back and forth instead of having to go open up a whole new browser and all of that. Um, you can see in here there is also um, links to carrier websites as well. So kind of, again, just quick links to get you in and out of Epic more easily. Um, another cool feature that I really like, it's actually, I think, one of my favorite features is the sticky notes. 
Um, they're pretty fun. You're gonna come over here to the new section and hit that drop down again. I guess it just kind of goes whether you hit the drop down area or not. Um, but you're gonna come down to the sticky note and you can see that it will. Okay. Hold on. okay. I was like, wait a second. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so you see our sticky note here. I really like this because it just looks like a post-it note, um, but you can add, you know, whatever client information you want here. We typically use this for more, you know, personal notes. So you could put, you know, Ty's daughter just got married or don't call him after three o'clock because he's busy or won't answer or whatever. So you just cut in and put that note in. Um, so you put that note and it would stay there until and unless you delete it. Um, and this is cool, especially in this account locate section, because again, if he calls or if you're about to reach out to him, then you would see that note when you come and look up his account before your call. And then if you see you click to another account and it goes away. And then whenever, you know, this is no longer relevant, you can just come in and delete it, unlike those activity notes that can never be deleted. So that's why I really like these. Um, they also go on this account section. They go back and forth between different people in your agency. So if you make the note and then like a CSR is looking later um, at that account, they will also see that note. So again, it's a good way to kind of pass along that more personal information about that client. And the clients absolutely love it. So if you had on there, you know, Ty's daughter got married over Labor Day in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And then when he called and you said, hey, how did the wedding go? Right. He would be over the moon and be your lifelong customer forever. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, then last thing I wanted to show you guys is the snipping tool. So this is more so on your computer than an Epic, but it's a great way to take a snapshot of either your whole screen or just a certain section. Um, we use this all the time in training. Um, you've probably gotten many a screenshots from the training department, but um, you would just come in. If you don't have this, um, you can see that Laura has it saved to her toolbar right here at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna, did it open on your other screen? It did. Okay. I don't even know if I can see it when I'm, oh, there we go. Can you see it? Yes, now I can. So you can see here, there is a shortcut, which means you wouldn't even necessarily have to put it down here if you don't want. I usually just use a shortcut, but if you can't remember the shortcut, then you can get it down here and I'll show you that in a second. But you would just come in um, and do the try snip and sketch. Again, I'm not sure if it's opening somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So again, you can either click um, or do that shortcut, the Windows logo plus shift plus S, or you can hit this and it'll let you take a screenshot. So if I know, you know, I just want to do this section, I could do that and it'll pop up this here. And then from here, you can either save it as an image onto your computer. You can email it to us. So let's say you're trying to, you know, ask us a question. You can send it to us via email right here. You can also draw on it, highlight a section. So maybe you're wondering why, you know, this isn't checked or something like that. You could send it to us then having that highlighted or marked up however you need. Um, this will also automatically save to your clipboard, meaning that you know it's already copied. So you just have to paste it wherever you want. You don't even have to do anything. It automatically does that for you. Um, if you do want this saved onto your dashboard or your, um, if you want it pinned to your toolbar down here, you would just come down to the left on that little, um, out, um, I almost said hourglass, magnifying glass. And you come in and type in, it's just called the snipping tool. But if you just type in snip, you can see it'll come here. And then from there, you can right click on it to pin or unpin it from your taskbar. I have to say that's my most favorite tool. Yes, it's not even an epic tool, it's just very helpful. <laughs> It is right. very helpful. So if you are, so Javier just sent me um, an item that he wanted to know why he was having an issue in suspense with. So it mm -hmm. was great that he was able to sniff it so I could right. see what he was talking about. Yes, absolutely. That's, yeah, especially when it comes to emailing training, when you have a question on a certain area, that is really, really helpful when we have that screenshot so we can see what you're looking at. Um, and that was all I had, Laura. All Back right. To you. That's awesome. Does anybody have any questions on any of those areas? 
Where did we find that that clip tool? So Russ, did you find it? You're going to search for it down below, and you're going to type in for the snipping tool, and then you can yours would say add it to cap bar. Mm -hmm. Or again, you can just hit that. Um, if you hold down shift, the Windows key and the letter S, it'll automatically just open up um, for you to snip as well. I did not know that. So thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Love it. Learn something new every day. That's what it's all about in the training yes. department. <laughs> all right. So I wanted to show you guys the market appetite tool. So if you're working and you have a commercial account that you have no idea where you are going to place this business. All you have to do is click on that market appetite, come over here and let's see, it's a concrete company, they're doing, they're pouring concrete and whatever state, we're in Illinois, we can try another state and see what's in Georgia. It is going to pull up the list of carriers that I'm appointed with that I can go and get a quote from. So with the auto, thumbs up, yes, it's in their appetite. And the BOP, the GL, the property, the umbrella, work comp, and travelers. You know, all of this is gonna show you what lines of, or what carriers are going to write what lines of business. So you can scroll down and see. Now, when you pull this up, if you are not appointed, with one of these carriers, you can remove that label from the appointment. If you have the yellow highlighted appointed, those are going to show first. And then that's all you have to do. You can come in here, look at any notes that the carrier might be giving you regarding the different lines of business. I can close those notes. I can go straight out to State Auto when I click on there and it will bring you right into State Auto. So market appetite is going to be for your commercial clients when you're looking where to place this business. Any questions on that? That is up at the top. It says appetite and it will bring up market appetite search. Also within your policies for a client, the market appetite search will come up on the right hand side. So if you're looking to remarket that piece of business, the market appetite will come up when you're under policies and you'll see where you can go to remarket that piece of business. All right, is it possible to turn it off on the policy page? We cannot turn it off on the policy page, but you can move it over. So let me take a look. Now pull up one real quick so I can I can show you what it looks like. Hopefully this will work. So the market appetite shows up over here on the right hand side. If you want to get rid of it, you can go ahead and use that arrow. The double arrow brings it back over and it closes it. So you'll see where you can go and remarket this piece of business. So travelers will take this auto so this client or this agent can go in and remarket that. Any questions on market appetite? That is a time saver. All right, another feature I want to show you in policies is real time. So if you are on the policy screen and you see these blue hyperlinks, this is going to take you out to that carrier website. If you don't see the blue hyperlink down here, that means the carrier does not participate in real time. So from here, I can click on the policy. It's opening up on my other screen and I will drag it over. And it's moving very slow. 
So it opened up my policy just by clicking on real time. And it will give me all the information that I need. So if I need to go in and make a policy change, I can do that. So just like what Catherine was saying, Ty's calling up, he's calling to make a change. When you click on here, make that change right away. It will take you right over into the carrier to go in, make policy changes, whatever you need to do on the policy. And Holly's on this call right now, and she's probably like, Laura, what are you doing? Get out of progressive. You're going to mess something up. All right, so that is how you work with real time. This is a game changer. This is going to save you so much time. You already have your username and your login saved for the carrier website. Take advantage of this in clicking on it and going right into the carrier website. All right, any questions on that? I see there's a lot of chat. I had a few questions in. come in. You do have some? Yes. Yeah. All right, so Crystal, those only work if you have all of your passwords set up in Epic. Is that correct, Laura? So with the real time, you can click on the local security and you can set it up through here. However, when you click here, I already have my username and password set up when I am logging in to a carrier website. So it's going to bring it right over. So if you guys want to test that and see if it works when you already have your username and password set up on your, on your website, or go into local security on real time. And what you're going to do is scroll through and highlight the carriers that you want to set it up. You're going to highlight all of them. So with some of the carriers, there might be 10 in there. So highlight them all and edit your criteria and put in your username and your password. That way it's going to be set up when you click on the blue hyperlink. And make sure you do that for all the different carriers. Now, if I'm looking at this progressive, is not one of my choices to set up real time here. So that means Progressive holds their own security. So when I click on the uh, policy inquiry hyperlink, I have to have my username and password set up through the carrier website. When you set it up through here, they're going to hold your username and your password for you. Epic will hold that. So either way, try both of them. Click on the blue hyperlink, let it take you over to the carrier website. If it's not going to take you over there, click on real time and go into local security and update your username and your passwords. All right. Is anybody using this feature? So this is the game changer when they added this in last year as one of their updates. All right, so when you have all of the different choices for the different carriers, more than likely it's going to be the first one that pops up for the NEIC code. And it's defaulting Explorer for Crystal. We will have to look into that. I believe there is somewhere in there that you can change what your default is going to be. So, Anissa, if you wanted to take note of that, we will look into that for sure. So, real time is not going to be an option on your home screen. It's only going to be when you were in policies. So locate a client, go to their policies, and you will see real time. And you should see the blue hyperlink. 
if you don't, you do a different policy or a different plan in order to see them. So if you look my home policy with guard, they do not participate in that. But progressive does. So we will see the blue hyperlink. Does that help Steve? Do you see it now? Yeah, great. All right, so from here, we have all these on-demand, I call them reports, on-demand reports that we can run for your client. So if I'm doing a personal insurance review, clients coming into my office, I wanna take a look at a summary of insurance. I can go to on-demand, click on summary of insurance, and it is going to give me, in a Word doc, I believe it is, the policy information that was downloaded. Another reason why you should be following up on your download is because you can get all of that information by going into On Demand and Summary of Insurance. And it does not want to pull up Summary of Insurance. Not the policy. And this works when we test it. So it's possible it's not going to pull up because I'm screen sharing. Maybe there is some kind of I don't know, security on there that's not going to allow that. But what happens is it pulls up a whole list and it's in, in nice format of the summary of insurance. You can also go in here and do a service summary comparison. So if you're looking at your policy and you have an endorsement and you're like, well, wait a minute, I didn't endorse that. What, what happened here? What did we do differently? You can come up to On Demand, do a service summary comparison, and you can compare line one to line two and preview it. And let's see if it's going to pull us up for us. So we have proposals that we can put into Epic for you. We would just need the information and that proposal front page that you would like. So let's schedule some time and we can take a look at that. And then when you come in here to do your on-demand report, you would be able to pull that proposal up and you would be able to go in and use that proposal on top of your summary of insurance. So we have all the different information, all the lines, the vehicles, coverages, and then when we scroll through, it's going to show us what is different. So what was different? Let's see, forty dollars. It's going to go through, and then it's going to let us know on the next line over here. So it's a helpful tool when you're wondering what is different from one service summary world to another. I use it all the time. It's a great tool. All right, any questions on that? And here's the summary of insurance. This one pops up. We got the summary of insurance. We did a comparison from line to line. Now we have a lot of issues here. All right. So that is your service summary world comparison. The summary of insurance. We can add in proposals if you wanted to add those in as for your big commercial clients, we can do that. If you're looking for fax cover pages, you can fax out of Epic. We can also have fax cover pages entered in here for you as well. All right, was there any other questions on there? 
don't see any right now, but if you guys think of something later, please email us at training at .com. But just to help us stay track on time here, Laura, let's let's talk about those activities. All right, perfect. Oh, and Jim asked if we could go look at billing without going to the carrier. No, we cannot look at billing, the billing screens, but you can take that hyperlink and take you right over there. And save you a lot of time. A lot of time, Jim. All right, so what we wanted to do is talk about the activities that pop up at you that every time it pops up, you might go, oh, why does this keep happening? We want to take a look at that. So if I am going in and I am adding in, I'm adding in an account, and I'm going to do this really fast, hopefully fast. All right, and we're going to put in an address. Zip. And we'll put in a phone number. But look, what I always want to do is make sure that I change that primary phone number to always be the mobile number. Always have your primary phone number be the mobile number, especially if you are using Lovebox as um, a third party vendor for your clients. You always want to have the primary listed to mobile. And we would put in the email address. For time's sake, I'm just going to hit continue. Oh, geez. And I'm putting it into the training department. This is the activity that gets me every time. Does anybody use this activity and keep it open and add notes in it? Crystal does. Crystal, you, what do you use this activity for? That's what we want to deep dive into. It's set to open the task. Okay. So it's set to open. And what we were thinking was have it set to closed. So it'll pop up just like this, but it would be set to closed and then you can click finish. So the thought is, is there more people who put it as closed and then click finish as open? So we have a poll that we would like to run. Can you see that poll, Anissa? Or is that? I don't see anything on my end. Not sure if anyone else can. So you, I think you have to click um, launch on it, Laura. Okay. I have so many pop-ups on this other screen <laughs> that it is not allowing me to run it. But I'm going to, I am going to get it. There we go. All right, so should the ad account activity be set to close? All right, let's see. Do we want it closed? Oh, we're at 85. Oh, look at the numbers. All right, so we're gonna set this, we're going to set this to, um, I'm gonna share the results here. Can you guys see the results? Yeah, yes, I can see them. All right, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna stop sharing that. All right, so we are going to set that activity to close. So what that's going to mean for anybody who is interested, you would have to just set it to open. So that activity pops up at you 
and it's going to be set to closed, then you would just need to set it to open. And then Crystal, here are all of your tasks. They will still be available to you. Will you show the task? Yep. So here's the different tasks. And Crystal, I believe these were the tasks that you wanted in here, correct? That we put in here, yeah. So if you have a different activity that you want to use, okay, we can create a special activity for you that when it pops up, you would just change the drop down. So let me show you on my F9 tool that I'm using. When that activity would pop up, you would just do your drop down. And if it was a follow up on download activity, we can keep that open. Some of our agents do not like the fact that when that download comes through, it automatically closes the follow-up on download activity. They don't like that. So we can create a new activity for you so that does not disrupt any of your workflows within your agency. Does that make sense? If you are interested in a different activity, we can do that and set that up for you. Crystal, when this pops up, all you need to do is change that closed to open. Does that make sense? Is anybody else using that? So there are the different tasks here. So when Crystal goes in, I think Suzanne is interested in how Crystal uses it. So Crystal, I'm sure when you send your thank you card, you probably mark this as completed and maybe add a little note if you needed to. So that's where these tasks come in handy. We have a lot of agents that have a lot of different activities that they set up that's their own workflow. So they may have, all right, we're going to get signed applications, we're going to quote this. And it's a helpful tool for new employees so they don't forget any steps when they're going through the quoting process. So these are the steps and the tasks that Crystal uses. Any questions on that one? All right, so now what I want to do is go back to my accounts. And if Holly's still on with us, she'll be very proud of me. I went in and created my own remarket renewal for my auto. I took a look at it and I decided, hey, you know what? Holly doesn't need to go in there. Her team, Maggie, they do not need to go in here and remarket this. So I'm going to close this activity. I'm going to close it as lost. We're not remarketing, not reporting it. And I'm going to click finish. This is the activity that is driving people crazy. Is this close opportunity activity. We have had many requests for our, you know, from our agents to automatically have this set to close. We want this set to close. If you use this, so let's say it was a new business account and I did not write this business. So it's a new business. I didn't write it, but I'm going to follow up on it on a later date. I'm going to set it to open. I'm going to change out my date when I'm going to follow up. And I'm going to change out my description. So I'm going to remarket this next year. Maybe there's tickets that fall off. And you don't have any tickets, though. So I just changed myself. So the ticket falls off or an accident falls off. Just keep it set to open, change the follow-up date and what you're going to do with it. All right. So here we go. We're going to do another poll. Sharon. 
should we have the closed opportunity activity set to close? That's what we want to see. We've got a lot of requests for it. So we are going to work on this one. Oh, well, we got a lot, 80% on this poll, we're at 100. I'm going to share the results with you. So we are going to set this closed opportunity to close. It will not be open anymore. If you use that, remember to set it to open. All right, any questions on that one? All right, perfect. So we are going to move on. And we are going to talk about issuing and not issuing a policy. Now this one, when you go in and you issue a policy, so you have a policy that doesn't download, the carrier is not going to download, you have to manually issue this policy. And you go up to actions and issue, not issue policy. Only issue and not issue your policies for policies that don't download. So issue, not issue policy. And the policy number, the dates are great. Issued, it's a renewal. And I'm going to click finish. And this activity pops up. It's set to close. And you would just click finish and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But we can take this activity and hide it in the background. So we it won't even pop up at you. You won't even have to click finish on it. If you are using this activity for something, I'm not sure what you would use it for. So if you are using this activity, I'm very curious to find out what you're using it for then we could not have it hidden in the background. So I'm going to launch my next poll. And here we go. Do you want to have this hidden in the background? So should the issue not issue activity be hidden? It's, it's still going to be there. You'll still be able to see it in your activity. It's just going to be hidden. It's not going to pop up at you. Oh, that was fast. All right. So we know what we're doing with that one. 100% said, yes, we are going to have that one hidden. All right. The next one we are talking about is attachment. So because I attach everything, I am going to take a look at my one of my um, at you know my oh my gosh my documents. So I have let's say I have my client's deck pages, quote sheet. I have signed applications, whatever it may be, and I'm going in here and I'm going to put it into attachment. So all I'm doing is dragging and dropping it over here. And when I let go, it's asking me, where do I want to attach this to? Well, it's a home application. I'm going to attach it to my home policy. It's an application. I can always change what folder I want it to be in. And then when I click finish, I get an activity. An activity that tells me that I just attached this. Well, I know I just attached it because it just popped up at me that I attached it. So we can set this one to be hidden in the background. And I'm sure I know what you guys are going to say on this one. All right, so should this one be hidden? Okay, so we have some no's. So the add attachment activity I would love to hear from somebody on what they use the add attachment activity. Why, it's, why do you keep that open? Do you 
put notes in there. I'm going to share their results there. So Maggie uses it to keep it open sometimes as an activity follow-up. So are you saying like, okay, I'm attaching the appraisal for a client. I'm going to keep that activity open because then I'm going to check back and make sure that they pay their bill or that that endorsement was done. Copy of a check or bill. All right. That does make sense. All right. So Suzanne uses it too. Okay. This one's staying the way it is. All right. We will keep that one open. All right. Questions. Is there any other activities that you would like set to open or close? Or there are some activities that when you use them, here's another left line, please. When you add an activity, there are some that when you go to close it, when you go to close it, it does not say successful. Okay, so we have to close this activity, this task first, so this one's completed. And I want to show you what it looks like. So there are some that pop up that don't say successful. And then you need to come in and change it to successful. If that's the case, if you let us know what that open activity code is, we can come in here and have it set to successful. So just remember what the code is. So this one was that A and an I for the anniversary date. And then we can set that to automatically be set to successful. All right. I know we're over time. Does anybody have any questions? Is there any other activities that you guys would like set to close? I can unmute you. You want to raise your hand? we want you guys to work smarter, not harder in Epic. So if there are those, this is driving me crazy activities, then just let me know. And then we will take a look at them. All right. So thank you guys. We went over the tips and the tricks and the hot keys. Um, hopefully we can continue with all of the different activities, making sure that they are closed for you. Remember to take advantage of our resources. Go to the asnoa.com website to our ASNOA University. Register for our weekly session. I know that a lot of you are taking advantage of the ASNOA private Facebook group. If you are not on there, please um, ask to join the group. And if you're not receiving our ASNOA Advantage newsletter, it's coming out once a month. Check your junk in your spam folder because it's got a lot of information for you that's very relevant to growing your agency and being an agency owner or producer, CSR, all that information is going to be in our new advanced newsletter. Next month, we are going to talk about purchasing an agency. So as an agency owner, if you're thinking, you know what, I want to purchase another agency, we do have agencies within our network that some of them are retiring and, and they're looking for somebody to purchase their business. Or you may see that on the Asnoa Facebook page, somebody's looking to sell their agency, you know, they want to retire, spend more time with the grandkids, whatever it may be. Uh, we're going to have a um, October Live with Laura with Mike Petroselli and Agile Cap. So Agile Cap will give you the information on you know, necessary for loans and acquiring an agency. Mike Petroselli is going to put on a great presentation for you. So please register for that for October 19th. 
Remember to fill out the evaluation at the end of our course. And we are all here for you guys for continuing uh, trainings, anything that you guys may need. We're here to help you so you can grow and thrive in your business. So thank you for joining today. This session will be recorded, has been recorded, and it will be available on our NOAA training YouTube channel. If you haven't taken advantage of the YouTube channel, please, it's got all of our how-to videos on there. All of past Ask Me says live before us. So please take advantage of that. Thank you, everybody.